Hi everyone, my name's Mike and welcome to the channel. Well today we're going to make a return to classic bikes. Um, 12 months ago we had a, um, a charity uh, classic bike day uh, that you may have seen the video that we produced for and uh, Phil and Lindsay turned up on their bikes to the day and you'll have seen um, one of Phil's bikes, the Norton International, uh, being ridden around the car park by Dave. Now on the back of that, that meeting, um, they very kindly invited us over to see the other bikes that they've got and they've got quite an extensive collection. Um, and so uh, that was really nice of them, but what was amazing is they said, well, come and have a ride of these bikes. So, you know, that's enough of you can't refuse, isn't it, really? So um, last week we went up there and we had a look at the bikes and true to his word, he's got some fantastic machines. Now, um, far too many for us to ride on the day. So what we've decided to do is to do a series of videos on, on Phil and Lindsay's bikes. And um, in this video, we're just gonna take a quick look at each bike. Well, we're looking at about two thirds of the bikes. Uh, there are others, but we just ran out of time to, to, to film them all. So um, Phil's giving us a quick five minutes on each bike. Uh, we're starting the bikes up uh, when we can. Uh, Phil is uh, an engineer, a uh, very experienced engineer. He used to work for uh, Norton Villiers at one point in his career. So he's got a tremendous knowledge on, on, on these bikes and they are just wonderful. So there are bikes from the 1920s through to 1976 as uh, Lindsay's got a, a Kawasaki Z650. I think there's a 350 Honda K4, uh, which we haven't filmed, but there's you know, every, he's got lots of different sheds and every time you open the, the door, there's an amazing collection of bikes in there. But we've kind of cherry picked a few and well, basically the ones that were easy to get out. and. Um, uh, Phil, as I said, Phil's giving us a chat on them. So um, on the back of that, what we're going to do is we're going to do some more videos. Um, and I think a couple that we've thought about um, is there's, uh, he's got a Vincent Comet, which is a 500cc single cylinder version of the, of the Vincent. Um, that's a 1950 bike. And he's also got that Norton International, which is a 1955 bike. So. It seems like a natural pair to, to try those out together. So that will make one video. And he's also got three hand change. Uh, and what I mean by hand change is, is the gear changes on, on the side of the tank. Um, so he's got three of those and his friend Bill, who lives up the road, has got this absolutely amazing HRD from, I think it's 1926. They used to be his father's. It's a 350cc. Uh, TT replica, so it's a replica of, of the bike that, that won the TT, uh, and it's that's been a labour of love. It's it's been built. You'll you see it. You'll see it. I've, I've featured it in this upcom upcoming video, but it's now in fantastic condition. Done a nut and bolt rebuild on it. Uh, so if we could get those out, then that would be another video. Uh, also, at the beginning of the video, you'll have already seen Simon. Uh, roaring around Phil's garden, digging up the grass on his Tribza, which is a Triumph frame, Triumph engine in a BSA running uh, in a chassis. Um, and that is a scrambler slash hill climb bike. So uh, Simon campaigns that bike. So what we'd like to do is go to one of his hill climbs and kind of do a fly on the wall um, day at the uh, at the hill climb and see if we can do some uh, recording of, of how he gets along on that which would make another great video but um, there's lots of things triumphs triumph twins um, as i said the old ones he's got norton's norton commando oh crikey royal enfield all sorts and all sorts of things he's got a a a norton um which is probably his favorite bike which I haven't included in this but that's probably worth a video on its own because that's kind of a bike that he's um, had since childhood so um, yeah lots of stories 
lots of videos that we can make out of this. So if this is the type of thing that you'd like to see, then uh, stick with us and we'd really appreciate a like and subscribe. Um, subscribing um, really does help us. Um, it, it, not from a monetary point of view, this channel earns just enough to pay for the software that we use to create it. But we do this for the passion. Um, as you've probably seen from our videos, we're a bunch of guys who love bikes and we just like to share our passion. And in Phil and Lindsay, we found um, other people who are equally passionate, if more passionate than we are. So we just want to share the knowledge and, and, you know, it's just wonderful. And if there are other people out there who would appreciate it, then that's why we do this. So, um, yeah, give us a like and subscribe if you don't mind. Uh, it helps us grow. And uh, with that, on with the show. Okay, so the Lemon Drizzle Gang are at Phil and Lindsay's house and they've been kind enough to show us a fantastic collection of bikes and um, in the future we're going to uh, feature some of the bikes and take them for a ride. So um, as you can see, the guys are eating lemon drizzle cake and Dave in particular yeah, very is, good. has and been telling tell. me to hurry up, <laughs> get the filming done so he can eat his cake. <laughs> so thank you very much guys, very very kind yeah. and, and uh, fantastic. Some fascinating so, uh, bikes. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. So we'll do a quick tour of the bikes uh, shortly and uh, yeah, thanks okay. a lot guys. Cheers. Okay. Okay, well this is uh, affectionately known as Lady Penelope uh, because it's a 6T, 650 Thunderbird, 1958 um, and uh, the front end, uh, unlike a lot of trons of the day which had what they call a nacelle, headlamp cowl on it uh, this has got uh, a 5T, like the Desert Racer American front end so if you look at uh, Marlon Brando in the wild ones, not dissimilar Rides really nice, and it's got what's called a slick shift gearbox. And, uh, and just just so people know what a slick shift gearbox does, quickly, Phil. Yeah, well, basically, you can operate the gear lever without using the clutch pedal, yeah. okay. the clutch lever even. Yeah. Is that like uh, a pre-selector? It, it's not a pre-selector. It's just it's just operates the clutch yeah. lift mechanism. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't that popular, to be honest. They yeah. stopped doing it after. They're all they're all right as long as, long as you go steady. Yeah. It's great. It's brilliant. Yeah. If you try and hurry it, slick it's not. Yeah. You know. Uh, so, the um, other thing with this is that we we bought this bike purely on the basis of the carburetor that yes. was on it, yeah. which is this SU down here um, which they put on for about 18 months or so I think uh, and it's an absolute hoop to ride because it's we've got a I can fix the throttle and it'll keep a constant opening so uh, it's all like well you'd like to accelerate would you I'll, I'll talk to the petrol see what they can do uh, and it'll keep going there you know but it's very very reliable and we did a ride out yesterday with the Norton Owners Club didn't we Phil and you yeah. were leading um, yeah. a nice steady 50 mile an hour all the way around yeah. and it never missed a beat did no, it no, we were no. coughing a bit with the smoke pouring out the back but other than that it was fine no it went beautifully no, it sounds lovely yeah. and the bars you have do a close-up of the bars and the chronometric speedo Mike because it's just beautiful it's got that lovely triumph sweep to the bars and a beautiful single speedo yeah they're one inch bars as well one inch bars yeah, yeah. You know. Really beautiful. Okay, well this is uh, a Z650 Kawasaki, uh, 1977. It was an American import, uh, which we've rebuilt uh, to a degree, and uh, it's absolutely lovely to ride. It's uh, it goes like the wind. A bit buzzy compared to the rest of the stuff we got, but uh, uh, a nice bike that's uh, come from the colonies. Okay, well basically what we've got here is a 650 Triumph engine, uh, BSA gearbox and primary drive and what is known as a Tripster, uh, which is a hybrid of the two. The front end, uh, the forks are sort of AJS, Maxlis, uh, Norton Road Holder lookalikes if you like, and the front hub uh, is uh, an AJS hub with the fins machined off it. Uh, built as an off-roader, this is Simon, the owner, oh, yeah. uh, who we... Um, we actually got him to uh, to go up Red Mile the Hill climb on it and uh, we went to a, a lot of trouble lightening the bike you know getting it all just so and then when he cleaned it after we'd done Red Mile there was one stone three pound of mud attached to it so all the uh, 
all the lightning was all for nothing because he was taking a small child up with him as well. No. <laughs> but uh, now it actually uh, uh, it flew up the hill. It did really well. We had to change the gearing on it, uh, which is always a bit of a learning curve. And uh, we'll get uh, some to start it yep. up. Yep, fantastic. Okay, start it. <laughs> it is light, but I'm old. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Bloody hell. Well, so I can't quite do it as effortly as you. What, what weight is it? I don't know, it must be sort of about, yeah, 130, one, one like yeah. yeah. Well, it might be much heavier. But that goes well. Yeah. Oh, that is just Fantastic. Lovely. Hi, well this is a uh, 1950 Vincent 500 Comet. Um, again, all original. There's a lot of these knocking about, they made these in the, the tens of thousands um, and uh, whereas time has gone on people have built them out of the top frame section of one part and another frame section and all that uh, and they all get mixed about. This is all as it left the factory in Stevenage and uh, quite a different bike to ride to uh, the Norton or the Triumph. Um, you tend to sit on this uh, and it is like riding a big hinge because yeah. it's, uh, uh, you've got all the, um, the, the the early sort of cantilever. Yeah, early monoshock, end, isn't the, it? Early monoshock on the back yeah. and everything. And the things I love about it is like, I mean, just the back mud guard, yeah. mate. It's straight off a 1930s airplane, you know. It's beautifully made, utterly overdone for uh, holding a mud guard together. But of course, they the, don't need any spanners to get the wheels out. It, it, it's just a completely different angle on things, you know. Very beautiful engine, even as yeah. a single. Not quite as beautiful as the V-Twins, but still very beautiful. But it's very, it's tall geared. Is it? Yeah. And I, and I think the reality was that they, these were, it was a lot like, uh, if you look at the 900 water-cooled Inkley Triumphs of the, of the 90s, yeah. they were more popular and a better bike than the 1200 Ford. Yeah, they were, Because yeah. you hadn't quite got the weight and stuff. Yeah, they you were more wieldy, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. You know. So is that alloy, a turn thumb screw here, is that a friction damper? Yeah, it's a friction yeah. damper for yeah. the seat. Yeah, the for the rear suspension. Yeah, and wow. for the seat. Yeah. Beautiful thing. Uh, okay. Great. Thank you. it takes as many kicks as people watching that actually took half a kick to yeah. start yeah, yeah, it yeah. actually you were only yeah. halfway down the stroke when it fired and what's the norton like to start that oh, i've only got a fall by it okay uh, and this is uh, our 500 tiger 100 1955 affectionately known as tiger lily uh, they've all got they've all got names so we know what we're riding each day um and uh, she was with the the last owner for 55 years um <clears throat> and basically he he bought her uh, as a result of a friend going to buy a sidecar outfit and the engine out the sidecar outfit was on the floor and this engine was in the sidecar outfit and then the rest of the bike was up against the wall and the guy said well I just want the sidecar outfit he says now you've got to have all of it so anyway shortened the story down the engine got repatriated with the frame they rebuilt the bike 55 years ago and then that was it uh, and then uh, so we've recommissioned it, refurtled it uh, and uh, again it's, it's a lovely lovely you know, bike but uh, again one inch handlebars, the big long 
six inch long yeah. grip. And a, and a gorgeous little button for the horn oh, built yeah. into and the one inch. There, yeah. there, there we go. go. Well, you know, it's, uh, I mean, all these, it's, your feet are on the floor, you know, it's sort of, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And, and again with the pre-unit trimes, gorgeous looking yeah. engine. The building is it's, it's magneto ignition of course. Uh, John will like that. So, uh, yeah. you know, I, th I think I'll get convinced when they put a battery coil ignition on helicopters. Mm. You know. <laughs> so. Very nice Phil. Okay. One I okay. definitely want to ride. Yeah. Alright, well this is Bessie, who is a 1928 500 BSA sloper. Uh, great fun, stonks along at a good rate of knots. I've done a few events on, on this. You know, they, they, they are ridden, they're not, they're not just flipping show pieces, you know. As you can see, they're, uh, uh, you know, they've got a bit of pattern to them because we use them. Uh, the interesting thing with this one is it's a bit of a halfway house on the oil in. The rider has to make the decisions. When I first got it, it was like following Admiral Jellicoe's battleship at Jutland. <laughs> Talk about make smoke number one. You know, uh, it was absolutely appalling. I thought Greta Thunberg's going to have a fit uh, because the uh, the oil in they've got a control knob there. There's another one on the other side. Uh, there's plungers and all sorts of bits and pieces, and it's up to you to decide how much oil it has because it's actually it pumps the oil out, but it doesn't suck it back. It all goes into this container at the front. Again, you know, this one is hand change, three speed, got a twist grip throttle, bounce and retard, decompressor, clutch, it's fairly yeah. straightforward. The other thing with this was, uh, you know when you get, uh, they'll bring out a, a vehicle, and they'll say, new for 1971, you know, and, uh, and then you get it, you think, is it really? When we got this, I thought, oh crikey, this isn't quite what it's supposed to be because it's got a beam frame at the top here, it's a uh -huh. cast. You can see that. Yeah. Oh yeah, beam, you can. Which was a new, a new idea, and it was the first, they used this cast beam for the singles and some of the V-twins as well. A friend of mine's got the nice uh, mm. BSA um, J12. Yeah, J12, twin, yeah. And that's got the same cast yeah. beam. And I thought, hang on, for the registration of the bike and for the frame that's on it, has it been built out a bit, whatever, now it turned out it is right because it was made for, it was put as like, like new 1930 the beam frame but this was very late 28, 29 so it was the first one to get yeah, the usual yeah. but it was always a bit of a puzzle aren't they, these, mm. these things you know but it uh, again you know it's a really, it's a nice handleable thing it's actually got brakes oh wow, you know, I mean, mm. there's uh, novel it, it has got brakes and uh, and again, you're on the flat on the floor. Yeah, yeah. very wieldy again. Oh yeah, it? yeah. You've got even got a friction damper. So know, what, what's the furthest you've ridden this then, Phil? Uh, 200 miles, you know, at one go. Uh, <laughs> but I've, I've, I've sort of competed. You've done various things where it's been 50, 55 mile an hour, mm -hmm. uphill, down dale, back roads, yeah, bone shaking stuff. You know, quality stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it's quality it's, motorcycles it's, from the Birmingham Small Arms Company. Yes, absolutely. Lovely. All right. Okay. Thank you for that, Thank you, Phil. Phil. Okay.
Okay, well, this is uh, Featherbed Norton International, which is a 500 single overhead cam. Um, there's one or two of these knocking around as survivors. I think they only made four, uh, 500 and odd, maybe 550 of them. Um, and uh, the survival rate is quite high. I think there's about 250 or 300 out there. But this one was, for the first two years of its life, was a work spike. That was oh, okay. used by the factory for development and stuff. And that, that sort of came to the fore. There's, there's weird things, well, I say weird, they're, they're different points, if you like, for the, uh, what's it, but having the rev counter straight off the end of the magneto, it's got rev counter and speedo up here on a binnacle, which is quite, quite, quite rare and unusual. Um, but the big thing was, the one day I was out on it and with a friend of mine riding it, because you never hear your own bike from behind. Yeah. You see, and I said, yeah, ring its neck, I want to hear it, we'll follow you on the commando. And it sounded brilliant. And then it started to go, blah, 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 and it died, uh, big time. So anyway, in the, in the best Top Gear traditions, we threw this in the bushes and left my wife with it. Uh, finally, we, we got, to, got it back home and took it to pieces. Uh, and the exhaust valve had been eaten. It uh. had just annihilated itself. But it, it turned out that uh, somebody in the dim and distant future had replaced the valve with an inlet valve out of a Perkins diesel engine in it. <sighs> Not made for the job. Dreaded previous owner stuff. Yeah, well you can imagine, you can imagine what was going on. Because yeah. the, the cam, like all the cam here, is going, right, I want you to open. The springs are going, stay shut, stay yeah. shut. Yeah. And the poor old valve's going, it's awful hot in here, <laughs> you see, and it just melted. So we were really, really mm. lucky in as much as the head of the valve didn't break off. It just pushed yeah. us down. Anyway, long story short, took it all the pieces, tried to find bits to repair it, ordered some Manx Norton parts, they were too small. So it's obviously different things have gone on with the engine. We ended up making our own valves. You'll often get people who will change valve guides and stuff. We actually made our own valve seats and fitted our own valve seats and everything. Uh, and I have to say, it goes like the clappers now. It Brilliant. does go. It's a very much. I, mean, I briefly rode it at a Ukraine show last year. This time last year, you kind of let me have a quick go on it. And it's very much fire every lamppost kind of gearing yeah. on it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's mm. daytime gearing. Yeah. So it's got a, a bottom gear that Sammy Miller would have been proud of yeah. when Charles riding. And then what's the difference between second, third, and fourth? We're not utterly sure. Okay. Uh, all I can say is that that solo or two up, it handles, it, it's stuck to the road. So it's quite really good. a very sporty Norton single in its day. Oh yeah, yeah. What, um, quite exotic. What sort of performance are we talking? Top speed on this? Oh, build, you reckon? 90 something. Yeah, mm. yeah. very fast. Is, is this the same engine that was in the garden gate frame? Yes. It is. Yeah, yeah. They're, all of a, they're all of a, an ear. Yes. I mean, and, yeah. and this one's got a lovely dealer badge on the back that yeah. Mike's going to get a close up of. Yeah. Which is the a fact, Denmark I'll do, dealer, isn't I'll it? I'll do that now. Yeah. Lovely Denmark. And again, lovely clocks on it with the rev counter, which would have been quite rare back in the day. Oh, yeah. As you say, the, the rev counter was normally an add-on held on with a spectacle on the side, oh, you see. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it does it does really handle and it shifts, you know. Mm. The only thing is it's got daytime gearing, so it likes flat ground, race circuits, it doesn't like the Welsh borders. <laughs> it doesn't uh, like the hills. Yeah. Especially uh, two up, I'd imagine. No, well it doesn't. Uh, it was uh, another thing was after it was used by Norton themselves, it got sold on to a dealer in Denmark. Oh, okay. And it stayed in this dealers for years, as far as we know, without ever being used. Because by the time this had got to Denmark in the end of 1957-58, the BSA Gold Stars was walking all over these on the race circuit mm. because this is old pre-war yeah. technology, technology, really. Yeah. Um, this one has been uh, we've we've got a slight modification in that it's got a an animal uh, monoblock carburetor on it. Which means it'll tick over. Would it would have had a GP on it? Originally? It's got a TT. I've got the original TT, TT for right. the bike, okay. uh, but of course that's got no throttle stop screw. No, no so tick over. You're sitting yeah. there, the tapping looks like, yeah. you know. And, uh, it's, it's so another fun. lovely bike of yours, Phil, that we might just be featuring. Mm. Mike, that would be very good, it would, yeah. wouldn't it? Lovely. Thanks, Phil.
You don't have to turn it off. It's a kill switch. <laughs> 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 pull, the, pull the decompressor up. That's it. Okay.